we're going to make a doormat. Now I already have a rope made of my 78 pieces, so I'm just going to show you using that, how to weave it. I just start on my first nail. See, we've got the knots in here, no big deal. So for this, I am just doing, and don't pull it too tight. You want it, you want it snug, but not, not where you're pulling tight. Okay, so for this, like I said, we'll just be weaving it every nail across the top, just up and down, all the way across the frame. Now the knots, I try to kind of tuck them towards the back, that way they're on the back of the mat and you're not stepping on them. They, if you have shoes on, it doesn't matter, but if you step on, the, on a knot with bare feet, you'll notice it. Okay, so when we re weave the cross pieces, we're going to be going over and under these pieces two at a time. So we want to make sure that we have an even number on here so that we're, um, so we have our twos. So we're going to be starting out at the top. When we do the side pieces, we're not going to use every nail. We're going to use every other nail. When we make our loops, we're going to loop around two nails instead of the one. And But we're going to leave a one nail spacing between it. Otherwise, it would just be really tight. And you're going to want to pull them through double width. So for the first row, I always go over my uh, two end pieces there to hold them down. So just over and under every two pieces. So over the first ones, under the second two. The first row is the trickiest because that's when you're setting up your pattern. And you'll just be pulling one side of it. Again, you want it to be nice and, you want it to be firm in here, but not you want it to be snug, but not too tight. And you want to make sure you keep your um, vertical pieces on the nails, so don't um, pull too much on when you're doing your weaving. So here's where we just straighten out our line a little bit. We put it over one of the nails, and then we wrap the other end over the next nail down and we'll pull the tail piece back so it's again just in there snug and we're going to leave one nail open we're doing it opposites this time so we were over this one on this this time so this time we're going under if we went over last time we're going under this time so this one we were under we're going to go over Again, we're skipping a nail, and we're going to take two. It may look a little loose when you're weaving it, but when we take it off, everything will tighten up. Skipping a nail, going around twice. Two. 
Okay, so this is how your mat will look once you have it all woven. Be careful for this bottom line because when you weave this bottom row, they'll want to pull off of the nails again because you're so close to them and it'll, it'll be easy for them to pop up, off, so just be careful. Another thing to be careful for is that you want to keep your double pieces parallel. Don't twist them around each other. So now I have my extra piece, my tail piece over here at the end. To get this off of the mat, this will be the last piece that I weave in. So I'm going to start I'm going to start here and go all the way around to to get my mat off of the frame. And what we're going to do is just loop everything together. These side pieces are going to be easier to loop because they're double spaced. You may want to pull the frame down onto the floor to get it off, which is actually what I think I'm going to do. So starting down at this end, I'm just going to pull this loop off, this one, and each new loop is going to go through the old loop. So if we're talking right and left hands, the right hand loop is going to go through the left hand loop. It's a little tight, so don't be afraid to pull on it. As long as you keep it on your nails, you're not going to, and it'll all straighten out in the end anyways. So around the whole thing, the, the right hand loop is going to go through the left hand loop, so you always only have one loop. So with that corner, we get a little bit of, of relief in there too, so it's not quite so tight. And like I said, you can um, shape this when we're done, so don't worry about being too loose, too tight, nothing. It'll get shaped at the end. And again, we're still right and left, and the right hoop goes through the left hoop. If all of them are coming off and you can't remember which one is next, just remember your overs and unders. So you want to, again, rotate. This one is over. So the next one I want has got to be an under. Okay, so I have my last loop and I have my tail. Let me get the frame out of the way. So I don't want to make this too bumpy here, otherwise it's going to be difficult to walk on. But I'm just going to pull a loop through there, so I have a loop. And then, basically, I'm just going to work some sort of knot to tie it off. It's not too tight because, again, we're going to shape this, so we want a little bit of play in there. 
Okay, so that's a bit of a knot. Also, I wanted to show you that when I am taking a break from, from the braiding of it, I just put a soft little slip knot in here. So all I have to do is pull out this knot to keep uh, adding more twine to it. It just holds it tight so I'm not redoing what I've already done. Okay, so I know I don't need this much of a tail here even to work with. So I'm just going to get it out of my way. I'm just going to cut off, I don't know, maybe 9 or 12 inches of it. And I don't need this. That's extra. So I just want to make sure that this isn't going to come undone. It's going to last for years and years without coming undone. So I'm just going to go a few other places down here and again just kind of tie the, the soft knots in here. And if you're still worried it's going to come undone, then you can tie a tighter knot. Whatever, whatever you think is needed for the traffic area that you're going to have your mat. Also, you can just keep weaving this end in and around in case you decide later that it is coming undone and you want to do something different. You could even unbraid it a little bit and tie a literal knot in there. Not a soft knot, but a hard knot somewhere wherever you wanted to make sure it wasn't going to come undone. Okay, so we have that. This is the shape of your mat. It looks a little puffy right now, and it is, but um, over, it won't take much time at all once you start walking on it for the ends to lie down flatter and for it to kind of find its shape. But you can um, move it. What I like about these mats is the weave is loose enough that you can pick it up and shake it out. The dirt falls through it rather than than um, piling up on it. And the knots, you can just go through. Some of them are going to be easier to get to the bottom of the mat than others, but it, it really, it doesn't matter. You will feel them if you're walking on it barefoot, but really the knots don't matter. Or maybe the other side has less mats or knots and you want to put it on that side. So this is our finished mat. It is about let's say 31 inches by about 18 inches. So our 36 by 25 inch frame made a 31 inch by 18 inch mat once we were all said and done. And it works quite well. It holds up for years and years. And you've used up 78 pieces of baling twine.